In this video, I'd like to talk about our Liquid Intelligence 239. It's a part A, part B cleaner for radiator, cleaning out radiators and, and blocks. Uh, particularly, this is a great product if you've got overheating issues. Generally, that's the reason you do. You know, sometimes the flutes can be partially blocked, which slows the solution down, which overheats the vehicle, or the ferrous oxide buildup on the internal walls of the water jacket acts as an insulator between the liquid and, and, and the metal, uh, reducing the, 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 um, the, the ability to transfer heat from the block into the cooling system and through the radiator. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these products and, and try to simplify the method. Um, see, there's, uh, you may well have a, a, a Falcon with a dusting of ferrous oxide in there, or you might have um, a classic or a, or a vintage car like a, like a Packard that's been sitting under somebody's house for 70 years. So one set of instructions doesn't always work for every application. So what we're going to try to do is simplify it all. Now, first off, we're going to talk about the Part A. Part A is the business end of the product. It goes in uh, uh, one spoonful per litre of radiator capacity. So working out what your literage is is the first thing to do. Now, like a Falcon, it would be 10 litres. So you'd put 10 spoonfuls heaped spoonfuls of Part A uh, into a bucket. Now, uh, to dissolve that product, uh, what you're going to do is, is, is use hot water. You can boil the jug or, or hot water out of the tap's fine, but if you put cold water in the bucket with it, it will take a month or some days to dissolve it. But um, all we need is a couple of litres of hot water in there. Give it a, a good swish around until it's fully dissolved. Now you're ready to go. But what we want to do first off is prepare the vehicle to take the product. Now, the first thing is to do is flush it right out completely. Try to get as much out of as you, as you can, so it'll just be the part A in there with water only. The second thing is that whilst you can drive the vehicle with the part A in there, we don't really recommend it simply because it is a it is a cleaner, not a coolant. And if you you know particularly in the summer, you're driving somewhere, it'll overheat maybe, and and some, something could happen. You've got to get the vehicle back. It's, it's an expensive thing. So what we was, want to try to do is just idle it. Um, now we've got to set the vehicle up to idle, so we've got to get it thermostat out. Uh, if you have the thermostat in and you try to idle it, well the thermostat's not going to open until you get up to full running temperature. And then, and then you want to turn it off. So you know, if, if, if we have the thermostat out, you've got immediate flow, you've got plenty of flow, and that's what it all takes is flow, turbulence, and heat to get this product to work properly. Um, so once you've got that out, the next thing is that there could be, if, if you suspect there might be a, a, a reasonable buildup in there, when we've when we've looked at these uh, vehicles, some of them have you know been sitting under a house for ten years or something like that, uh, whilst they're being built. Um, what we find is that if you've got a snake camera and got right down to the guts of the cooling system, had a look at the internal walls of the water jacket, you see layers of ferrous oxide in there. You've got the like top layer, which is the soft furry stuff. And then below that, you've got the hard, dense, rigid materials, you know, the ferrous oxide, harder material. And then underneath that is, is the cast iron. Now, embedded in that top layer of ferrous oxide sometimes are pieces of shale and scale, harder, dense little pieces. So when you, when you put the part A in, as made up as a pre-solution, what's going to happen is it's going to have a big reaction with that top layer because it's soft and furry, it'll break down quickly and release a whole heap of those shale and scale into solution, uh, into, into your cooling system, which will be picked up by the water pump and, and probably find their way into the fruits of the radiator, uh, which will exacerbate the whole problem. We don't want that to happen. So we've got to set ourselves up a, a little filter to, pre to prevent that from actually you know, getting into the, into the fluster radiator or the heater matrix. So the best way we know how to do that is there are proprietary filters available. There's a, there's a uh, top hose inline filter, uh, which, is, which is not needed after you've done the clean anyway, so that's expensive. Uh, the second method is, is, is just a, a sock. Now, there, there, it's a filter sock, uh, they call it a filter sock. There, there are proprietary ones available. I, I don't know, I've never seen one, but people tell me that they're out there. But I, I, all I use is a, is a business sock. Um, I just go down to Woolies, buy a business sock. It's a, the one I use is a, um, a cotton nylon blend. 
I, I stretch it open so you can see the, the size of the weave um, and you can see that, it, that nothing could get through that was big enough to block a flute of a radiator but you also need enough flow to prevent overheating uh, uh, because because the coolant's going to go through there it needs to flow easily uh, without being restricted and then um, the other thing is that I, I get a summer version of those business socks so they're, they're, they're the thin version now what I do with that business sock is I disconnect the top radiator hose from the radiator I grab the toe of the sock and push it into the top tank of the radiator push it almost all the way in until you get to the end of the sock or the neck of the sock then peel that back over the male fitting on the tank and then push the hose back over the top of that and lock it down with a hose ring now <clears throat> when you've got flow What's going to happen is that, that that sock is going to open up inside the, the top tank of the radiator like a, like a balloon. And uh, it's going to allow flow, but anything that comes through from the clean, because there will be a fair bit of uh, muck coming through, uh, will get caught in that sock and it won't get into the fluster radiator or keep going and get into the heater matrix. So um, that's the first thing. They're the things you've got to do before we start. So thermostat out and uh, radiator clean, uh, radiator block clean, get the little coolant out and then put the filter sock in place. Now once you've got all that done you've made up the pre-solution of the part A. Uh, so let's, let's, let's say it's a falcon so we've got 10 spoonfuls of part A uh, and of course as I said you know, there's the spoon, heap them in, don't level them off just be very generous with the helpings. There's plenty in the pack. There's enough to treat 30 litres in that of part A and 30 litres of part B in, in the kit. Now, <clears throat> so once you put that uh, powder into a bucket, just mum's plastic bucket out of the laundry is fine, just something like that. Uh, you put some hot water in. Now, uh, it has to be hot. If you put cold water in, you'll be there for a month of, a month of Sundays trying to dissolve it. Um, boil the jug, fine. Hot water out of the tap's fine. Uh, but all you need is a couple of litres. Don't fill the bucket up. Just a couple of litres of hot water. Mix all that up until it's fully dissolved. Pour that into your empty cooling system. Top that up with a hose. Put the cap on. Now, <clears throat> as I said before, I think uh, this stuff is 10 times more aggressive at 70C or above. Than it is at room temperature so the more flow the more turbulence you create the more heat you put into it the faster this works so what we suggest you do here is you you turn the vehicle on um, and, and watch it come up to temperature when it gets up to, to center on temperature gauge switch it off let it cool do it again bring it up again so just keep it keep the liquid flowing through there it will keep reacting with the uh, with the ferrous oxide and the calcium um, and, and if, if you do that, like we, we suggest you maybe do it over a two day period. Like, a, like let's say you, it's a weekend job and you start say uh, you know, Saturday morning, by Sunday afternoon, what you do then is, is look at the liquid to see what color it is. Now, what I mean by that is that when you put the, when you put the pre-solution in to the bucket or made up the pre-solution, it was clear. It was maybe a bit hazy, but it's 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 it looks like clean, clear water. Now, when you pour that in and top it up with the garden hose, and then start running the vehicle, what we find is that it, it uh, has that big reaction. The part A had a, will have a big reaction with that soft, furry stuff. The the, the top layer of ferrous oxide will break it down very easily, and as it breaks it down quickly, it will make that clear liquid go like a big brown scungy pea soup in there so it's, it's a real murky color uh, a real reaction thing going there then when you get past that top layer of ferrous oxide and you're down onto the harder denser layers below it because they're denser uh, the, the whole color changes you know because it slows the solution down and it goes from that brown murky look into like a light beer color a you know, pissy yellow uh, and then the closer you get back onto the cast iron and the less you've got to react within the cooling system the clearer the liquid becomes so it starts off clear and goes back to clear that's your parameters that's where you know where you are in relationship to the clean so by the time it gets to, to clear which is generally like if, you, if with a falcon uh, with a, with a ferrous with a, with a, uh, a dusting of ferrous oxide in there you might get it all done in within hours uh, something with a bit of age to it, 
with, with, where you suspect there's a, there's a reasonable build-up, uh, it, it could take those two days and could take even longer. So if, if for instance, on Saturday, uh, Saturday afternoon, you look in there and it's gone clear already, well, that's it. You've, done the, you've fixed it. You've, you've, you've cleaned it out. So just flush out the part A. But if you get to uh, Saturday um, and you open it up and it's still murky or it's still amber-looking, then just keep it going another day. Now, let's say you get to Sunday afternoon and it's gone clear, we'll drop it out of that point. Again, if you find it's still got colour to it, take it one extra day at a time until it goes clear on you. Right, so that's, that's what we're looking for. It's going from clear to clear. That's your parameters. Now, when, when you get to that clear, now it could be what we're talking about is not not glass clear because there's there's all sorts of other stuff in there there's mud there's clay there's sludge in there uh, but we're not talking about rusty looking water we're talking about uh, clearish looking water might be a bit murky from from the mud that's come off uh, the cooling system but it's it, it, but you, there's a big difference between rusty looking and and maybe muddy looking yep, okay so based on that you you then get to that point where you drop out the part A. Now, what the part A has, has done is, is dissolved the calcium in the flutes of the radiator, broken down the ferrous oxide uh, on the internal walls of the water jacket. Now, what it breaks it down into is what they call iron salts. What iron salts looks like is like uh, talcum powder. Um, zillions and zillions of these little particles of talcum powder. They're bright orangey red in colour. Uh, they're... Um, <clears throat> they've, they've gone through this chemical reaction to get to where they are by via the part A and they've taken on what they call uh, a molecular attraction of metal. They become magnetic in a sense. They're now clingy. Uh, they they want to cling to every little nook and cranny within the cooling system. Now, when you if you t took the, the, the radiator cap off and looked down onto the top deck of the, of, of the radiator tank, what you would see is, is everything that looks like it's been coated with rust, like a surface rust. Uh, that's what those iron salts look like. Now, you can wipe them off and you can blow them off with a garden hose, but the problem when you flush out the part A and you're trying to flush that, all that debris out, it won't want to come away because the, the garden hose, the power of the garden hose doesn't get to the nether regions of the back of the motor, it doesn't get into the head area or the gunnels, so a lot of that debris is still in there. Some of it will come away, but that's why there's a part B. You know, that, that this is what the part B is designed to do, is help do the final clean. So, so what, what we're going to do now is we flush it every which way we can, try to get as much out as we possibly can, but don't be too zealous about it because a lot of it won't want to come away easily. Now, once you've got it to that point where you think it's okay, next thing is to do is to make up a solution of part B. Now, you do that in exactly the same way as you did the part A. The same number of spoonfuls go into the bucket as you did with the part A. Now for the part B. Uh, hot water again, a couple of litres of hot water. Give it a, a mix up and pour that into your empty cooling system. Top that up with the hose and put the cap on. Now, <clears throat> what we do with the part B, the part B is an overnight thing. All we do with Part B is, is we run it up to temperature a couple of times. All we're looking for is the, the washing machine action of the, uh, of the water pump to move the solution around a couple of times. Just bring it up to temperature, switch it off, do that two or three times. Then let it sit overnight for a good soaking. Um, and then in the morning, bring it up to temperature again, drop out the Part B. Now, what the Part B does, or what the Part A did, was it, it just, the Part A... All that's doing is, is dissolving calcium, breaking down ferrous oxide. That's all it does. Part B neutralizes the cleaning action of the part A, brings your pH back to neutral, gets rid of the debris you generate it using the part A. Now, this is the iron salts, that, those, those bright orangey particles of iron salts uh, that didn't want to come away after we flushed out the part A. What the part B does, part, part B reacts with those iron salts yet again. They go from a, uh, an orangey red colour, rusty colour, or, or to a black colour. Uh, they lose a lot of that molecular attraction of metal. They, they now become more free floating within the cooling system. A lot easier to get them out at this point. Uh, and what B also is, is an alkaline soap based compound. And as such, it's a, it's a pretty good cleaner. You know, it gets rid of the mud, the sludge, the clay, all those other things that accumulate in cooling systems over the decades. So when you flush out the part B, 
part B um, will come out quite dark, if not black, and that's where most of the debris will come away. Uh, good idea when you're flushing it out, don't flush it out on bright, clean, bright uh, white, nice, clean concrete or, or patterned concrete. It'll stain it. So what we're going to do is do it on gravel or, or the grass or, or out the road, something like that. Um, these products are pretty much inert to everything, and they're, they're not poisonous as well. Uh, so you know, if, if um, dropping it on the grass won't hurt the grass. So uh, next thing is that you've still got debris in there, not very much. Uh, but the best way to do this is just flush it up to a point uh, and, and where you think you've got everything out, then fill it full of water uh, and leave the cap off and run it. Now, without the thermostat in place, that water pump's like a fire hose. It moves the solution around uh, like a washing machine, gets all those particles that we've left in there up in suspension, and then uh, keeps them in suspension, then quickly turn the ignition off, drop that bottom radiator hose, before it gets too hot, because we want to do this multiple times, we don't want to keep waiting for it to cool down. Because if you if you heat it up too much, you've got to wait for the thing to heat it, cool down before you can put cold water into it. So, so just run it for a bit, drop it out, and then fill it up again, run it a bit, drop it out. Now, each time I've done this, what I've done is I've just got a saucepan or a or a bucket and angled it under the vehicle. Uh, when I disconnect the, the the bottom radiator hose from the radiator to drop the water out after I've, I've, I've run it for a bit, I drop it into the bucket. Now, what will happen is it will overflow the bucket because the bucket's on an angle under the vehicle. Uh, it will overflow the bucket, but the iron salts that are still trapped in there, they're iron salts, you know, they're heavy. So they'll be caught in the bottom of the bucket. Now, once you've emptied it, you look in the bottom of the bucket and say, okay, that's how much I've got out this time. And then you do it again. Fill it up again, run it again, drop it out again. And, each, and the second time you do it, you find that it's about half as much. And then the, the next time you do it, it's like five eighths of bugger all coming out. You keep doing it until it's just nothing coming out but clean, clear water. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Because if you don't get those particles out uh, properly, what's going to happen? Well, they're, they're, they're inert anyway. They're not going to do any damage by being in there. But what they do do is that they discolour the coolant when you put the coolant in. You've got nice bright green coolant going in and um, within a day or so that bright green coolant has been discoloured by these iron particles and it goes brown on you. Not a good look. So, so we you know, uh, need to get these particles out completely so when you put the coolant in it'll stay bright and clean for, for decades. Um, that's the that's the extent of it. After you've done all that, you've basically got the vehicle back to the way it was when it rolled off the production line. Thank you.